The Roman military was by far the most powerful and successful force in our history. Many Romans believed that they were descendants of the god Mars, otherwise known as the god of war. As some could assume, they were pretty badass. The Romans were constantly changing their strategies so that every time they came into another battle, they would not be using the same tactics. The weapons that Roman used were quite advanced for the time. They used two different kinds of spears, or otherwise known as pita, pila. It had an extremely jagged edge that could gouge through enemy shields and even though, even some armor if it hit at the right spot. And if that wasn't already bad enough, the spears were incredibly difficult to get out once inserted. The Romans were able to maintain power because they only became wealthier and wealthier as they were also able to evolve much quicker due to the extended resources that they had. military force in the ancient world it conquered a vast empire that stretched from the Middle East to Britain. They were so good that they took on armies ten times their size and still won. No women were allowed to be in the Roman army. Most soldiers in the Roman army came from foreign countries such as Africa, France, Germany, Spain, and the Middle East. At its largest, the Roman army had around 500,000 members. To have this large army under control, they were divided into groups of four to 6,000 soldiers called legions. Each legion was then divided into groups of 80 called a century, and the leader of the century was known as a centurion. The Roman army was so successful because of the strict guidelines they had to follow. They were very well trained. A Roman soldier could march 20 miles in full equipment. A Roman soldier was expected to follow orders at all times. Anyone who didn't would suffer harsh punishments. For example, if you were caught sleeping on duty, you could face a death sentence. Military tactics were used by the successful Greek army. The combat formation was used by the Greeks and Romans called phalanx. This meant the soldiers were equipped and fought in line side by side. The Romans borrowed this idea but took it to the new heights. The key to their success was the standardization of equipment and training, which also included a short list of terse commands that every soldier understood completely. Their uniquely large scuda, as the Roman shields were called, were 360 degree wall of wood that helped them through battles. The front row of the formation would kneel behind their shields over a meter in height. The second row would hold their shields above the men in front, and so on. If protection all around was needed, men on their flanks and at the rear would lock their shields together, which formed an excellent missile barrier. This was one of their smartest strategies. The spear was the main weapon of the Roman infantry. The three main weapons of the Roman military were the gladius, pilum, and asta. The gladius was two feet long, used for stabbing in the abdominal area, which were almost always deadly. The gladius, in some circumstances, was used for slashing and cutting. Though the primary attack was thrusting at stomach height, they were trained to take advantage and slash at the kneecaps. The pilum was the main weapon and perhaps one of the biggest reasons for Roman dominance of the ancient world, along with the full body shield and gladius. Roman soldiers typically carried two pilum and would throw them as they charged towards their enemies to cause death, discard their shields, and confusion. The asta was six and a half feet long with an iron head. It was longer than a sword, so they could attack their enemies from a farther distance. It was not thrown, but used for thrusting. The military was made up of many different ranks. It started with the basic soldiers, legionaries, which were Roman citizens, and auxiliaries, which weren't. Legionaries went into form contraburniums. After ten contraburniums, it would form a sentry. A sentry has their basic flag bearer, or signifier, all the way up to a leader, or a centurion. Six sentries formed a cohort, which was made up of around 480 men, and then 10 cohorts plus a small cavalry unit would form the legion. The legion was the biggest unit in the Roman army. Each cohort is labeled 1 through 10, with the first cohort having around 800 men, with five double sentries. Centurions in this cohort are actually the highest ranking premier dings, with the highest ranking one being the primus plus, who could be promoted and affects the castorum who's in charge of legion's day-to-day -day activities. Next up is seven higher-ranking men, five tribuni angusta clavi, one tribunes legavictus, and the commander of the whole legion, the legates, who is a member of the actual senate. Auxiliaries, however, 
are specialists that serve Rome. They are not Roman citizens. Example are the Alae, which is a group of 500 cavalry riders. Each cohort of auxiliaries has a perfectus cohortus, which is basically the commander of a cohort for a group of auxiliary soldiers. When an auxiliary serves Rome for 25 years, they are actually repaid in land, a pension, and rights to, as a Roman citizen.